Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends, guys. Welcome back to our slash entitled people, where people think that they're the center of the universe and they can have what they want when they want. And in today's episode, a Karen lets her little ones destroy a store, guys, and she gets mad at staff for trying to stop them. I hope you enjoy the stories today. Don't shake your heads too hard. And as always, you can send or link your post to this email right here. This happened during middle school. When volunteering was required for schoolwork, and I had the unfortunate experience of dealing with a Karen that got mad at the workshop coordinators for refusing to let her hobgoblins run amok, knocking over plants and destroying the place. Now, before this experience, I've rarely done volunteer work. I've helped out a few times, but that was for church events or family members, so this was new for me because it was required for school. I've been at the flower shop all morning, helping customers load their plants or help at checkout, and when there wasn't much customers, I would help out by watering the plants and moving plants around to make more space for other plants. And that's when Karen appears. We could tell that she would be a problem when she just storms up and stares at everyone like we were dirty peasants. The woman looks around at the plants. All the while, she's throwing dirty looks at the coordinator's kids and grumbling to herself about something. Me and the other volunteers were moving things around when Karen walks up to us saying, Excuse me, where are more of these types of plants? As she's holding a pot in front of us, I take a look at the tag and go searching for the plant. When I return, Karen's walked off somewhere and I couldn't find her, so I walk off to finish moving things around. A few minutes later, she stomps up to me and says, Hey, where's that plant I asked for? I reply, Oh, uh, I couldn't find any more, but I'm sure the coordinator might have more somewhere. Karen then says, Well, then go and get two more pots for me. Also, make sure they don't have any dead leaves in it. I need them fresh. I say to her, I'm not sure where they would be, but I'm sure you can ask them yourself. At that, Karen huffs and puffs away, so I go back to what I was doing. Not long after, Karen pays for some of the plants she was looking at, and she demands we help her load the plants into her car. Since we weren't busy, and because the workshop was closing soon, me and the other volunteers help load the pots into her car. That's when we hear some kids yelling and screaming from the car, asking if they can go see the plants before they leave. So Karen opens the door and she lets them run around for a bit while we load the plants into the car. As we're walking back to the workshop, we hear the kids running around among the rows of plants, and they even start to move the tags around on the pots. The children even start pushing the pots across the tables, and a lot of them were very close to tipping over. We had to rush over and catch them before the pots fell off the tables, while telling the kids to not shake or push the pots around, because the coordinator paid a lot of money and spent hours to grow these plants. The coordinator notices this and told Karen to keep an eye on her kids, since Karen had come back to shop around a bit more. She then says, Well, why should I have to watch my kids? You've got plenty of employees here doing nothing. She then gestures at me and says, Surely they can watch my kids instead of standing around doing nothing. The coordinator tells her, Ma'am, these aren't our employees. They're high schoolers doing volunteer work. Karen then says, yeah, whatever, just tell them to keep an eye on my kids. Karen just walks away and continues looking at the plants, while her kids continue running around amok. That's when they start playing hide and seek among the stands, bumping into them whenever they ran by or ducked under the stands to hide from one another. I then say, hey kids, can you not hide under the stalls? You're bumping into the stalls and causing the pots to shake and fall over. We don't want the pots falling onto the ground, or worse, hitting you when falling over. That's when kid number one says, But mom says we can play wherever we want, and these tables are perfect for hiding under. I tell the boy, she might have given you permission to play while here, but these are heavy pots, and if it falls off the tables on your heads, you can easily get hurt. Now please don't crawl under here and don't bump into them either. As I'm finishing this, I hear a loud crashing sound, and then the laughter of kids, and then footsteps sprinting away. I turn to see that a giant potted plant has fallen onto the ground, and dirt was spilling onto the ground. I run over to find an empty pot to place the plant into, carefully making sure that I don't accidentally damage the roots. Not long after I finished doing this, I noticed the kids had gone quiet, but Karen was still browsing, which made me slightly suspicious. And since I've babysat most of my little cousins, that means they might be causing trouble somewhere. So I go off looking for them. As I'm walking towards the back row of plants, I notice some of the pots that were set up back there had disappeared. 
so I wave over the coordinators to ask if they moved them, which they said no. And that's when we hear kids giggling from a few feet away. We follow the giggling to see Karen's kids had ripped over a dozen plants out of the pots, and they were playing with the dirt. That's when the coordinator gets mad and he yells at the kids for messing up their plants, causing them to start crying and running to Mama Karen. The other coordinators come see what's happened and they bring over a dustpan. As me and the volunteers are cleaning up the mess, we hear an angry scream out of nowhere saying, Who dares to yell at my kids? I want to know right now. The coordinator goes off to deal with Karen and this is what I can remember of the exchange. Karen screams, Well, who was it? Who was the one that made my boys cry? Was it that Asian brat who threatened to drop a pot on my son? Hearing that, I look up from the mess towards Karen with a what the f look on my face. Because I never said that, I just warned the kids the dangers of the heavy clay pots falling on their heads. Luckily, the coordinator didn't believe Karen's BS and told her that I would never say that. And I just warned the kids, not threaten them. That's when Karen says, So you're siding with the Asian? Well, I guess you don't mind losing customers when I report you to your boss and write a review about this place. The coordinator tells her, Go ahead and report me, because we're the ones who coordinated this workshop, and we're not an actual business. You can take the plants you bought and leave, because we don't approve of you making false accusations or racist remarks towards our volunteers. That's when Karen gets really mad, and she starts starts knocking over more potted plants before storming off. Luckily the ones she knocked over were low to the ground and they didn't break. But Karen decides to be even more petty by throwing out all the plants from the back of her car and smashing them in the parking lot. After that, she comes storming back to us demanding a refund. Of course, she didn't get one, which caused her to become even more enraged and the coordinators were forced to call the cops after she starts destroying more property. The police came and made Karen leave. I don't know if she had to pay for the damages she caused. The other volunteers and I ended up staying an extra hour to clean up the dirt, repot plants, and sweeping up broken pots before we could leave. Wow guys, some people, right? Let my kids destroy your store because if you don't, I'll destroy your store myself. I sure hope they made her pay for all the damages that she and her kids caused, guys, and didn't just let them walk away scot-free. And the part where the Karen destroys her potted plants that she bought and then asked for a refund made me laugh out loud. Congratulations, Karen. You just flushed down however much money you spent on those plants down the toilet. So there was a local burger place in my area that I visit regularly. It's normally empty during the week, but on this day, for whatever reason, there were a few more people in there than normal. I was with a close friend, who we'll call Carlos. We're standing in line, talking for about two minutes, when Karen and two boys walk up behind us. One kid starts fussing and whining that he's hungry, and this seemingly triggers the other kid to do the same. Carlos and I just shrug it off, and eventually get up to the front of the line and we order food. Carlos orders before me, but I let the cashier know that I'd be paying for both mine and his meal, and that was a mistake. Before I even get my wallet out, Karen shoves me out of the way, and she says, I'd like to add to his order. She then proceeds to order over $40 worth of food. I ask her what she thought she was doing, and she said, I heard you're paying for that guy's order. Carlos, so I'm sure you wouldn't mind buying food for a hungry single mom and her two children. Now normally, I would have considered that if, you know, she asked me first, but who in the right mind thinks it's okay to do what she did? I tell her that I won't be paying for any of her food and that she's setting a bad example for her kids by trying to get free stuff from people. Well, that comment pissed her off and she starts getting up in my face. She then raises her voice saying, Don't you dare tell me how to parent my kids. You have no idea what it's like being a single mom raising two boys. F. You. So yeah, that got me mad. I retort saying, yeah, you're right, I don't know what that's like, but I wasn't the one who told you to get knocked up, twice. So I really don't want to hear your single mom excuse for being an a-hole, getting free food from others. At that, Karen screams and says, who the F do you think you are talking to me like that? I work two jobs to provide for my kids, and you think it's okay to stand here and disrespect me? I say to her, you disrespected me by cutting in front of me and assuming you'd get free food. I don't know what world you're living in, but you need to come back to Earth. 
She then screams and says, Me and my children are hungry, and you can't even be nice and help us out? I say to her, you literally ordered $40 worth of food for yourself and two kids without asking me. That's not helping out you and your kids. I'm sorry, but being hungry doesn't make you entitled to free food. You need to pay like everyone else in here. The woman continues yelling at me and says, I don't have any money. How would you feel if you were in my situation? I say to her, listen lady, you're not getting free food off me. I'm sorry you're in a situation like this, but you clearly think that being a single mom with two kids is supposed to make everyone around you do whatever you say. Hearing me say that, she just looks at me angrily and she didn't answer. At this point, everyone in the restaurant's looking and listening to the conversation. I just tell the cashier to remove whatever she ordered and I pay for my food. I thought that would be the end of it, but oh boy was I wrong. After I placed my order, Carlos and I walk to a table to sit down and wait. That's when the woman huffs and screams, I'm next. She then orders her food again, and she angrily forks over the money she clearly had and pays for her food. Carlos just looks at me and says, what the F just happened? So we get our food, and we're about to leave when Karen shouts out, those two guys harassed me, call the cops. We then turn to see the manager of the restaurant. She again goes on to say that I harassed her in the restaurant in front of her two kids and she wanted the cops called on me immediately. This lady clearly forgot that the entire store witnessed the entire thing and no one was having it any longer. I didn't need to say much to defend myself to him before the entirety of the store started shouting and screaming at her for holding up the line and making lies about me. I'm pretty sure the lady felt like she would have been punched in the face any second because without collecting her food, she took her two kids and she ran out of the store. Carlos and I just looked at each other and we start dying of laughter and a few other people did as well. We haven't stopped laughing about it since then. Oh boy guys, I, I think we can all agree that asking first before just hopping in assuming that a stranger will pay for your food would have been a much better thing to do, right? And yeah, like in her situation, life might be tough, who knows. But with reading all these stories about entitled people guys, like the woman could have not been a single mom at all because some people try to get what they can. And when things don't go their way, they tend to go a little bit extreme. Like with wanting cops called on OP for harassing her. So I'm not entirely sure how well this fits with your entitled Karen stories, but this story still infuriates me so I have to share it somewhere. To give you some backstory, the aunt in question is not my blood relative. Let's call her Aunt Karen. She's married to my uncle and no one in my family likes her. The woman is selfish, she's entitled, materialistic, and she loves spending my uncle's money. My uncle has a good job and she quit her job when they got married. Karen's got three kids before they got together, ages 12, 7, and 4, and she frequently hires nannies and babysitters to watch them so she can go on trips and have me time. That'll be important later on. Now to the story. It was a few months into their new marriage, and we were at a family dinner at my grandma's house. A few of us, including myself, my sister, and grandma, were sitting in the kitchen talking. And that's when grandma asked me how college was going. And that's when nasty Aunt Karen joined in the conversation. She didn't know I was going to college. So Karen chimes in and says, Oh, you're in school. What's your degree? I say to her, I'm getting my associates in early childhood education. She then looked stunned at my answer, and she said, Only an associates? That's not gonna do anything. You are going to graduate with that useless degree, and you're gonna end up working at Walmart. I say to her, well, that's all I can afford, right? She then cuts me off and says, and education? Do you even have any idea how to deal with kids? Now mind you, I've been working at a preschool for over three years at this point. And the last year, I've been a lead teacher and I've won an employee award from my organization. So yes, I do know how to deal with kids. I say to her, well, I'm a preschool teacher now, so yeah. Me saying this suddenly changes Karen's expression, and that was the end of that conversation. A few days later, I got a text from her saying, Hi, I was wondering if you could come over tomorrow night for a few hours. Dinner will be provided. At that, I was slightly confused. Like, what was she asking me? I thought maybe she was asking if I wanted to join them for dinner, or maybe she wanted to talk. So I respond, hey, can I ask what the occasion is? Karen says, oh, we would just like your company for a few hours, get to know you better and hang out. 
So at that, I reluctantly agreed, and soon enough, I found myself at their house the next night. When Aunt opened the door, she was very dressed up, and I was taken aback. Like, was I supposed to be dressed up too? And that's when Karen says, You're late, and now I'm late. I say to her, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize how time-sensitive our plans are. Karen then rolls her eyes at me and says, My plans. She then says to me, Okay, so George knows where everything is, and he can help you with the younger two. And then she starts to leave, walking right past me to her car. That's when I say, whoa, whoa, what? Karen says, if you need anything, call me or your uncle. And it suddenly hit me that she expected me to watch her kids while she and my uncle went out. I had no idea where they were going or how long they were going to be gone or that I was babysitting. She then attempts to leave again, but I'm fuming at this point. I really thought she wanted to spend time with me. And I say it, I said, I thought I was here for dinner. Karen says, oh, well, there's dinner inside, help yourself. I needed someone to watch the kids. I say to her, then hire someone. And she responds, uh, duh, that's you, you're a teacher, aren't you? I say to her, yes, I'm a teacher, I'm not a babysitter. She then says, oh, come on, your job isn't that hard. You watch kids all day at work, so my kids should be no problem. Just stay here with my kids, we'll be back in a few hours. That's when I yelled at her no, almost crying. Months of putting up with her were finally way too much. And Karen says, uh, excuse me, I was gonna pay you for your work, you know. I tell her I'm not going to work for you. Find someone else to watch your kids and maybe ask them first. At that point, I stormed out, the altercation not even lasting 10 minutes. Once back in my car, I drove off as fast as I could before parking at a local grocery store and calling my grandma sobbing. I explained the whole situation to her, and I felt so frustrated and upset, as well as stupid for thinking that my aunt wanted me to spend time with them. My grandma of all people knew how awful Karen is, and she was able to calm me down enough, and she offered to have me over for dinner to go over the events. We end up laughing and making jokes about it. I love my grandma so much. I haven't talked to my aunt in months now, and I'm totally okay with that. What a crap move that was, guys. And honestly, I've always said that entitled family members are the worst, because some people really think that just because you're family, it means they can treat you however they want. In this case, totally lying to OP to try to get free babysitting out of them. Again, what a piece of crap move that was, guys. Making it seem like it was a dinner invite to get to know OP better. When secretly, Karen knew all along that it was for her kids to know OP better. Dirty, dirty. And guys, be honest, how many of you would have let Karen go off to dinner and then called the cops on her? So my wife and I have always dreamed of celebrating our 40th anniversary with a luxurious vacation. Just the two of us, reliving the romance of our early years. We've had it all planned out for years now, and we were excited beyond words. Enter our adult daughter, Jane. So Jane and her husband got wind of our plans, and they promptly invited themselves and their two kids, 9 and 5, along. Now, I did originally put my foot down and told them that this trip was just for us, which upset her some. But my wife has a hard time saying no to Jane as she's the youngest of our kids, and she's our only daughter. And she did not want to hurt her feelings, so she reluctantly agreed to let them join. Now, I wasn't thrilled about it at the time, but I wanted to make my family happy. And I knew my wife was okay with the idea of a family trip, even if she was heartbroken that we wouldn't get our romantic trip. So we went along with it. The place we were originally going to wasn't child-friendly, so we changed course, and we decided on an all-inclusive family-friendly resort. We paid for the resort and our grandchildren's plane tickets. Jane and her husband only had to pay for their own airfare. And here's where things get complicated. As the vacation got closer, I start having a change of heart. I realized that our 40th anniversary was a -a once-in-a-lifetime milestone, and I wanted to honor it in a way that was true to our original plans. My wife and I might not be able to afford a trip like this again for quite some time, and it's something we always wanted to do. So without consulting anyone, I switched our plane tickets last minute to go to the romantic destination that my wife and I had planned for. I did not tell Jane or her husband. I didn't even tell my wife until the day before our flight left, which was a day before Jane's flight left for their vacation. 
It wasn't an easy decision, and I feel guilty about it, but I wanted our 40th anniversary to be the special intimate celebration that we had always hoped for. We called Jane after we landed to tell her, and she was extremely upset to say the least. She seemed to have the idea that we were going to look after our grandkids, so she and her husband could have the alone time. And now that I abandoned her, they would have to do it all by themselves. I hung up on them when my son-in-law starts shouting at us saying that we ruined their trip. And my wife and I enjoyed the rest of our trip. They came back the same day we did, but they haven't answered any of our texts and Jane seems to be ignoring me. My wife told me that she vastly preferred our trip to the family trip we would have taken, but she still doesn't like how Jane's mad at us and she wants me to apologize. Now I'm not sure I want to apologize after learning that Jane and her husband were using us for free babysitting and a free trip, but I feel like I should just to keep the peace. So am I the a-hole for changing our trip destination last minute and leaving Jane and her family to fend for themselves? Yeah, in my opinion, I think it's a no-brainer here, guys. OP is definitely not the a-hole for doing that for his wife. Guys, it was a 40th anniversary trip, a once-in-a-lifetime trip for your wife. Like, OP's the MVP here for changing the destination last minute and surprising his wife. In my opinion, guys, sometimes you have to be selfish because, again, you only live once. And if that was the only time that OP and his wife could afford a trip like that, I would say F it, leave the adult kids at home and let them fend for themselves. And shame on Jane and her husband for using OP and his wife as free babysitters so they can enjoy a paid-for trip at an all-inclusive resort. Wow, guys, see, you've had entitled Aunt Karens using family members, and now you've got entitled kids using their parents. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. I hope you didn't shake your heads too hard. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's an r slash I don't work here lady, where a psycho idiot keeps trying to get OP fired, but little does he know, OP is the boss of the place. Guys, go check it out if you haven't, and myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.